In this video, we are going to be looking at the second part of the da'wah that the Prophet ﷺ went through. In the video, Bada'it al or the message begins, we talked about the closed preaching or the secret preaching of the Prophet ﷺ. In this video, we are going to be looking at the open preaching. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما. The open da'wah or the open preaching started with Surah Al Anbiya verses 214 to 216. After Awwadu Billahi min al-Shaytan وأنذر عشيرتك الأقربين واخفض جناحك لمن اتبعك من المؤمنين فإن عصوك فقل إني بريء مما تعملون The translation of these verses And warn your tribe And be kind and humble To the believers who follow you Then if they disobey you Say I am innocent of what you do when these verses were revealed, the Prophet ﷺ began to gather his family members from Banu Hashim, the subsect of Quraysh, and call them to Islam. Ibn Abbas anhu reports that when and warn your tribe of near kindred was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ ascended Mount As-Safa and began to call out, O children of Fahr, O children of Adi, these being the various sub-tribes of Quraysh, they all gathered together before the Prophet ﷺ. And if a man was not able to go himself, he sent a messenger on his behalf to find out what was happening. Quraysh, Abu Lahab came and the Prophet ﷺ told them, Suppose I informed you that horses i.e. meaning an army, were in the valley, intending to attack you, would you believe me? They all said, yes, we have experienced nothing from you but truthfulness. Then I am a warner to you, the Prophet ﷺ said, then I am a warner to you before the time of severe punishment comes. Woe to you for the rest of this day, said Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab exclaims, he reacts to the Prophet ﷺ and says, Woe to you before the time of... He says, Woe to you for the rest of the day, exclaimed Abu Lahab. It is only for this that you have gathered us together. Then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the verses in Surah Al-Lahab. After A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. Perish the two hands of Abu Lahab. Perish the, ha the two hands of Abu Lahab. His wealth and his children will not benefit him. As a result of this, Abu Lahab developed a severe disease. And because of this severe disease, he was not able to attend the Battle of Badr. After Rasulullah invited members of his family, he started calling anyone that he met to the religion of Islam. Most people dis disbelieved in his message. The polytheists disbelieved in the idea of worshipping Allah alone. A point to be mentioned that the polytheists of Quraysh, the Kuffar of Quraysh, they believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. However, they would associate idols with him to get closer to Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal mentions their kufr in Surah Az-Zumar verse 3 after A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim
ألا لله الدين الخالص والذين اتخذوا من دونه أولياء ما نعبدهم ما نعبدهم إلا ليقربونا إلى الله زلفا إن الله يحكم بينهم فيما هم فيه يختلفون إن الله لا يهدي من هو كاذب كفار. The translation of this verse is surely the religion is for Allah only, and those who take awliyat, awliyat means protectors and helpers, besides him say, we worship them only that they may bring us near to Allah. Verily Allah will judge between them concerning what they differed. Truly Allah guides, truly Allah guides, not him who is a liar and a disbeliever. Something to keep in mind as well is that the birthplace of Islam is with Adam alayhi salam. However, Quraysh, they knew of Islam through Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. Through the years, this Hanafiya, this religion of Hanafiya of Ibrahim and Ismail was corrupted from worshipping one God to worshipping hundreds of idols and associating these idols with Allah Azza wa Jal. Quraysh also disbelieved in the idea of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. They did not believe in the Day of Resurrection. And Allah Azza wa Jal highlights their disbelief in Yawm Al-Qiyamah in many verses. One such verse is in Surah Saba, verses 7 and 8, after A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هَلْ نَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ إِذَا مُزِّقْتُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقٍ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ إِذَا مُزِّقْتُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقٍ إِنَّكُمْ لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ أَفْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَمْ بِهِ جِنَّةٌ بَلِ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ فِي الْعَذَابِ وَالضَّلَالِ الْبَعِيدِ These verses mean those who disbelieve say, Shall we direct you to a man, i.e. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who will tell you that when you have become fully disintegrated into dust with full dispersion, then you will be created again? He, they, they say, has he in invented a lie against Allah or is there madness in him? Nay, but those who disbelieve in the hereafter are in a torment and in far error. This is in Surah 7, verses 7 and 8. Quraysh, the disbelievers of Quraysh, the Kuffar were so confident about their idolatrous beliefs and about their pagan beliefs and about their disbelief in the Day of Judgment that Mujahid, Mujahid and others related that Ubay ibn Khalaf that he went to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a decayed bone in his hand. As he broke the bone into small pieces and scattered those pieces into the wind, he said, O Muhammad, do you claim that Allah will resurrect this? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered, Yes, Allah Azza wa Jal will cause you to die, then he will resurrect you, and then he will thrust you into the hellfire. The Kuffar also made ridiculous claims. One of these claims was that the message of Allah Azza wa Jal should come through an angel and shouldn't come through a man. I mean, they meant the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such claims were highlighted by Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran in Surah Al-An'am verse 8 and 9. After A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim. وَقَالُوا لَوْلَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ مَلَكٌ وَلَوْ أَنزَلْنَا مَلَكًا لَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ ثُمَّ لَا يُنْظَرُونَ وَلَوْ جَعَلْنَاهُ مَلَكًا لَجَعَلْنَاهُ رَجُلًا وَلَلَبَسْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مَا يَلْبِسُونَ The verse means, and they say, why has not an angel sent down to him? And we sent down an angel, the matter, would have been judged at once. 
and no respite would have been granted to them. And had we appointed him an angel, we indeed would have made him a man, and we would have certainly caused them confusion in a matter which they have already covered with confusion. All of the prophets that were sent before the Prophet wasallam were human beings. None of them were angels. They had their normal lives. They used to do their normal business like everyone else. Another statement, another ridiculous statement that was made by the polytheists came from the men, Al-Walid ibn al mughira and Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. They said that the Qur'an should have been revealed to someone that was rich and powerful. In the in Allah Azza wa Jal says this in the verse in Surah Zukhruf, verse 31. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ And the translation of this verse is, and they say, Why is not the Qur'an sent down to some great person from one of the two cities, i.e. Mecca and Ta'if? The Prophet wasallam also was labeled with many horrendous labels, many terrible labels that Quraysh labeled him with, and Quraysh accused him with, the Kuffar used to say that he was possessed by a jinn, or that he was dealing with magic. There are five reasons that we can summarize that the, the majority of the polytheists of Mecca did not believe in Islam in the beginning. The first reason is that the prophets had a weak impact on the Arabs. As the religion of Ismail, the religion of Ibrahim, was corrupted very fast after the death of Ismail a.s. Number two, they were fanatic to their forefathers' belief. They used to say that our forefathers didn't believe in Islam, so we are not going to take Islam as our religion. Number three, the Jews and the Christians did not believe in the Prophet wasallam initially. Number four, the Kuffar had very strong tr- tribal norms. Quraysh had very strong tribal norms, tribal standards, and where if they would believe in Islam, many of their tribal standards, their ways of life would change, and they did not want that to happen. And number five, they wanted to keep their status among the other Arab tribes. They felt that if they believed in the Prophet ﷺ, that their power status would change among the other Arab tribes. This concludes our video on the open da'wah. والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وآمنوا بما نزل على محمد وهو الحق من ربهم وهو الحق من ربهم كفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأصلح بالهم